Good morning and welcome to our Cup of Faith for today, Wednesday, June the 23rd. Hope you're having a great week. It's a beautiful Wednesday here in Moose Jaw. And uh, it was so gorgeous, as a matter of fact, that I'm sitting out on my deck. <coughs> it's, our, uh, it's our favorite place to visit and to eat and, and to celebrate. Speaking of celebrate, uh, yesterday was my mother-in-law, Ina Sigelko's 91st birthday, one of the great matriarchs of, of our church. And uh, we had a really nice time. We went out for dinner with them, and then the grandkids, uh, my grandkids, their great-grandchildren came in, and we all had birthday cake. So again, happy uh, birthday, Mom. Uh, I was thinking a little bit about uh, that we're complex people. And because we're complex people, we have complex needs. And there's good news to that. And the good news is, is that the same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19. So as complex as we are, God will supply all of our needs. American psychologist Abraham uh, Maslow prior, prioritized, uh, got a new mouth, just trying it out today, prioritized our needs into five levels. He said there's the physiological needs, which is our need for food, water, warmth, and rest. There's the safety needs, which is security and safety. There's the love needs, which is intimate, uh, friendships, and, and, um, and com community. There's the love needs, which is, I'm sorry, I just said that. The self-esteem needs, which is our, our, our sense of accomplishment and self-actualization, which is basically the need to be happy in what it takes. And interestingly, the Bible has identified these needs um, through the 23rd Psalm and how they are met by the Lord our Shepherd. And a few weeks ago, I, I looked at that first one, our, our need for uh, food and water and warmth. And from the 23rd Psalm, verse 1, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, therefore I lack nothing, or I shall not be in want. And I concluded that, I don't know if you remember or not, but I'm going to try and repeat it every week, is that God willingly discloses his character and his promises. These are not something he hides from us. This is not something that he doesn't want us to know about. He just puts it out there for us all to know and to trust and rely on. Uh, the second part, we talked about our safety needs and that he, he lets me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still waters and he renews my life and he leads me along the right paths for his namesake. So in essence, God protects us, he provides for us, and he restores us. Today we're going to talk about that need for love or belonging or community needs, especially in times of, uh, in uncertain times. So here's some hope for uncertain times. I came across a little article uh, from uh, a journal called the Northwestern Medicine. And it was five things you never knew about fear. And what it's saying is that fear is bad, but fear is good at the same time. So here, here, let me go through these quickly for you. First of all, fear keeps us, keeps us safe. It's an emotional and biological condition that we all experience. And it's important to experience fear because it keeps us safe. It keeps us away from dangers. Uh, the second thing is, is that fear is not a phobia. They're not exactly the same thing. Uh, do you remember... A lot of us would, the, the movie Jaws, and when it first came out, and I was in a Winnipeg theater with my cousin, and I saw this scene, and everybody in the theater jumped. And, and so what it did do is even if you lived in Manitoba and you were going to Winnipeg Beach, you were afraid to go in the water because of the shark. Well, that's a fear, but when it gets to the point that you don't even want to go to the beach, you're afraid to even be on the sand, that's more of, more of a phobia. And uh, the difference between a fear and a phobia is that uh, uh, um, fears are common reactions, whereas phobias in, will interfere with our ability to function and maintain a consistent quality of life. The third thing about fear is that it can be a pleasure. Have you, 
Have you ever gone to a haunted house or watched a horror movie or been on a roller coaster and there's this adrenaline rush and it continues even after the ride or the event is over? So it and it can be a little bit, I don't know, addictive. Some people uh, love these things. I'm I'm not necessarily a, a fan of any of them, but but some people it, it is a thrill. <clears throat> The next thing is, is that fear can make you foggy. Now we're going to start to get into some of these negative things about fear. And that there are some parts of your brain um, that, that are shutting down. The part of the brain that harnesses reason and judgment becomes impaired. And so now it's difficult to make a good decision or to think clearly. You see, the, the fear is not just emotional, it is also physical. And that last point about the five things you didn't know about fear is fear is experienced in your mind, but it also str triggers strong physical reactions. And um, as a matter of fact, did you know, I didn't until I read this, that, that in, in times of fear, even your blood flow changes and the blood will flow, instead of flowing from the heart, it starts to move to your limbs so that you can either fight or flight. You, um, so you know how to, so, so you react. So, so those are five things about fear. But, but another thing is, is that when we think about fear and all the negative consequences, or we move into the phobias, is that fear will rob us of the abundant life. It'll take away our joy and prohibiting us from plans that God has for us. Those plans that are, that are for good and not for disaster. It gives you a future and a hope because we're, we're, we're so incapacitated. We're, we're, we're afraid to launch out even a little bit. And that's not the plan that God has for us. That's not the will he has for us. It's not the destiny that God has for us. So let's quickly move into the fourth verse of the 23rd Psalm. And even when I walk or when I travel through the darkest valley, the valley of the shadow of death is it is it is literally called it's the name of a place i will not be afraid for you are close beside me your rod and your staff they comfort me now this valley it was a literal valley and it was like a gorge and it was very treacherous and and it was very narrow and the thing about it was is that you 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 had really two choices you keep going forward or you go backwards but there was no way to get around it and there was no side exit door you just had to plow through but it was also you could fall off off the cliff or or there would be wild animals or there 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 could be robbers so it was a very life threatening place and it understandably created a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety. And maybe some of us right now are going through that place. It's not the place on the map, but it's the place in our life that we don't know whether to go frontwards or backwards, but we know we can't get out of it. And, we're, and it's like we are predisposed. We're going to have to see this through. And here's the good news. We don't have to be afraid. And we don't have to be afraid because our shepherd is with us. And our shepherd has two things. He has a, a rod, it was a short stick, and it was, it was, a, um, uh, it was a stick to, to protect, to, to ward off robbers and, and to ward off wild animals. And he uses that to protect us and the things, that the, the enemies of our heart and of our mind and, and our situations. He protects us with that rod and then he comforts us and he guides us with his staff. It's like a walking stick. And it gives us consolation. So here's an expanded translation of this verse. Perhaps it'll help and i am uh, leave you with two thoughts after that. In addition to all this, when I travel through a deep, dark, narrow gorge covered in the shadow of the dead, I will not be afraid of bad things because you are beside me. Your staff of protection and your walking stick of support, they give me a sigh of relief and I am consoled. Before I give you my last two thoughts, I, this has been going over in my head a little bit. If you will notice in the 23rd Psalm, there's nothing we have to do to earn this. There's nothing we do to appropriate this, except maybe to be aware of it. 
because this is the God who acts proactively on our behalf. God supplies these things for us to take us through these uncertain times. So in the hierarchy of needs to be loved, he's with us. So let me finish with these two thoughts. Number one, we are not alone. We may feel like we're alone, but we're not alone. And we are not alone because we are loved. And the second thing is because we are loved, God who is our shepherd will protect us and comfort us. And I trust you find that encouraging today if you're going through your valley of the shadow of death. God bless you. Brenda and I love you deeply and we're so grateful that we get to see you in church again. And cheers, my friends. Enjoy your cup of faith.